Hello and welcome to my channel. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about asthma. And just before I was about to, or just as I started to film this video, I had a mini asthma attack. If I had left it any more, then it would have got ten times worse. Um, as I always say, my children are upstairs. If you do hear them, I'm very sorry, but I'm a mum. Uh, yes, so about asthma. When most people, when they hear the word asthma, they kind of associate it with something that most people have. It's very mild, it doesn't really affect their life in so many ways. Um, yes, you can't really do a whole bunch of running, but it's not going to kill you effectively. Um, <coughs> please excuse my coughing throughout this video. However, there are some people like me who have brittle asthma. Um, asthma affects my life every single day. I can't walk down the street without my asthma being bad. I can't ever go for a run because I would end up in hospital. <clears throat> um, I can't really exercise because it starts my asthma off. And Another thing with brittle asthma is I could be sitting there doing absolutely nothing and an asthma attack can occur. Just out of the blue, I could be at a friend's house or I could be I could be anywhere, even sitting on my own sofa. Even now, which it happened a moment ago, an asthma attack can occur and it's scary. I've had asthma since I was one years old, so I've sort of grown used to having asthma if you will it's something that I've lived with I've got used to um, it comes with a whole bunch of allergies with it um, I'm allergic to every animal with fur I'm allergic to fish I'm allergic to fruit I'm allergic to nuts and that's all of them not some like every variety of fruit I'm allergic to so I can't eat them <coughs> um, I'm allergic to wasp stings and bee, st um, and bee stings yeah uh, I have to carry around an EpiPen so that if one of these things, it either if I get stung or if I eat something that I'm not supposed to eat, say if I have something that's got an ingredient in it that I'm not allowed, then I have to stab my own leg with a needle <coughs> and call, you, call an ambulance to go to hospital which is an anaphylactic shock. My asthma, my eczema and my allergies all go hand in hand. And I don't really tend to complain about them and if I meet people I don't really tend to tell them that I've got all these issues because not only do they not need to know, in my opinion, it's quite embarrassing for me because I don't know many people with the same sort of allergies and the same symptoms and whatever else. And as I said, when people hear asthma they immediately think, oh, it's just something little. <coughs> um, I can't even, well, I shouldn't really go to the zoo because of how severe my asthma gets after that. And the issue is, I have delayed reactions. So for someone who is allergic to an animal, most of them people will react within about five minutes of being around that animal, <clears throat> um, which means your allergy is mild. However, I can be around an animal, provided I don't touch it, obviously I won't puff up, but I can be around that animal and it will, the, Allergies will hit me five hours later, so my asthma will start, <clears throat> my allergies will kick up, my eyes will puff up, my face will puff up, my skin will get itchy and rashy. Um, so yeah, that is quite a severe reaction and I've had it since I was a child, so I mean I'm getting used to it, um, I am used to it. <clears throat> As a 26 year old adult I'm used to it, of course I am, but asthma isn't something I can ever get used to. So I mean I'm used to it in the sense that I don't always do my inhalers when I should. There are mo multiple times that if my mum comes over or Sam comes in, they're like, you need your inhaler, I can hear you wheezing, like you need your inhaler. And it's only then that I realise that yeah, I probably should do it actually. I'm so used to not being able to breathe normally that it doesn't really click when I should be, shouldn't, well, when I'm not breathing as well as I should be able to. Um, I have to, I've got three inhalers, <clears throat> one's blue, one's purple, one's orange. I have to use them every single day. The purple and orange has to be used twice a day, but my blue inhaler, <coughs> the 
this is my godsend, it's a Ventolin and most asthmatics have either blue or brown. I wasn't even able to have the brown because it's too mild for me. So I do have the blue inhaler and I use this at least 10 times a day. <coughs> That's not including the night times. Um, this is honestly a godsend. I don't know what I would do without this inhaler. I think, I, well, I wouldn't be here. I also have a home nebulizer and if you don't know what that is, it's if you go to hospital with breathing difficulties or you have a panic attack and you can't control your breathing, <coughs> it's a mask that goes over you and it, at the hospital they give you oxygen but I actually have this in a liquid form going through that and into my lungs. Um, it does help, of course it does, it's the equivalent of doing 10 puffs of these which is what I prefer to do. Um, however, there are times that I've done these and then go on to my nebulizer because I just can't breathe properly. I It speeds your heart rate up. Um, it does make you shake. I mean, I have moments where I'm so full of whatever this stuff is. <coughs> uh, so full of Ventolin that I can't stop shaking. I'm physically, everything, every part of me is shaking. Um, and it's scary, it is scary, it's something that I have to plan if I'm going to a friend's house because if they've got animals then there's no way I can go. And not only for me now, I think before I probably would have done as an, as an, uh, I'm, I'm very, <clears throat> I don't want to say immature, I am mature about it all, but when it comes to going to a friend's house because they've got an animal, I kind of just sucked it up and went and was like, oh well, in five hours I'll deal with the consequences. Whereas now Liam's got the milder reaction, uh, milder allergies, he suffers it almost immediately. <clears throat> so I now avoid going anywhere because of him. But previous to Liam, and previous to having Sh Liam and Sean, I didn't really care about my health. It wasn't something I focused on, it was kind of something that I just lived with. Um, <clears throat> It never really bothered me or affected me, um, but as obviously as I'm getting older and understanding it more and sort of taking more notice about my body and obviously having two children to look after, it's very, very scary. There are a lot of things I can't physically do. Um, there are a lot of things I have to worry about consistently. <coughs> and this, the one thing you're meant to do as a human is breathe and I can't do that properly. 90% of the time I can't breathe properly. <clears throat> because of that mini asthma attack a moment ago, I'm not I'm gonna be coughing and dealing with all of this for the next hour or two. <clears throat> and in that space I could have another asthma attack or the likelihood is I'll be able to go to sleep tonight and wake up two hours later to have another asthma attack. Um <clears throat> Asthma day to day I can deal with. Yes, I do have to have an inhaler on me at all times. I think I've got seven of these around the house. Two of which are in my bag. Two are downstairs, the rest are upstairs. Um, <coughs> they, I go through them so quickly. Most of them are pretty much empty, but I have to keep them there just in case I can't find one. And I panic. Um, it's got to the point now, as I'm getting older, if I can't find my inhaler because I know I need it, I start having a panic attack and hyperventilating, which in turn makes it worse, and I don't tend to know what to do. <clears throat> um, the only good thing is my mum literally lives around the corner and she's dealt with this her whole life as well, so if I ever did really need something, it would be an ambulance on my mum. <clears throat> the scariest thing about having asthma is night times. I, I've all, uh, everyone I spoke to that has children, says that the hardest thing about having a child is lack of sleep and I, I don't really understand that because and I, I don't really understand that and I think it's because I've always lived off of lack of sleep due to my asthma so I, I have about two to three asthma attacks per night um, if I go sometimes I get away with it sometimes I'll have one and it will only be mild and whatever else but nine times out of ten so that's my phone <coughs> Nine times out of ten, I'll fall asleep about nine, ten o'clock. Yes, I know it's early, but I'm a mum. So about nine, ten o'clock, and sometimes eleven, sometimes twelve times up, sometimes one o'clock. I wake up physically not being able to breathe. Like I sit up and I can't, I can't take in air. There's nothing I can do. 
So I grab my inhaler, um, <clears throat> I'll sit at the end of the bed, I'll put this in a spacer so it's a bigger tube that will get more of this in it and it will go straight into my lungs when I breathe in as opposed to try and get this down. Um, do that <clears throat> and I do that 10 times. I have to sit there for a while, try and calm myself down, have a drink because this can cause oral thrush due to the amount of steroid which is in a few of my other inhalers, my purple one especially. Um, so I have to calm myself down and then if it doesn't work then I have to try again. Um, by this point I really should be calling an ambulance at any point really if I have an asthma attack and I don't feel like I can handle it I should call an ambulance but my first thought is the children so I don't really like relying on an ambulance and also they like you to go to hospital after so I always try and steer away from doing that and try and manage things myself. Um, it's stupid and my health is paramount because I need to look after them but it's just something I've never liked because I was in hospital so young, so much as a young child. I've always tried to avoid it as being an adult um, and obviously since I've had Liam I've managed to do that because I've refused to go or I've just tried to deal with it on my own. But there is nothing scarier than waking up and physically not being able to intake a breath. It like, there's just there's nothing worse. It's horrible. It's like someone's standing on my chest. Like, just in, in between my lungs. It's like someone's squashing them and I can't do anything to get them off, the, off of me. Um, there, there have been a few occasions where I've physically panicked, not knowing what to do and couldn't get, get, couldn't get my... Um, asthma to calm or couldn't get my breathing under control, couldn't release the tightness and I've had to come downstairs and physically try and force myself to breathe. Like I can't even explain how, how it is. I've taken 30 of these at once which is highly dangerous, shouldn't be done. I should have been in an ambulance by then um, but my own stupid self didn't want to and I've had to force myself to try and calm down and breathe and drink and whatever else. To which point I didn't go to sleep after that. I think that happened at three in the morning a couple of weeks ago. Um, it happens quite often. Every couple of months, I'd say that like it gets that severe. Um, and unfortunately, my asthma is all weathers. So if it's sunny, then my asthma's horrible because of the humidity and hay fever along with that and everything else. <clears throat> if it's wintry and it's cold, then my asthma's also it works because the cold gets on my chest and I just can't find the air. Um, the only month that I sort of do well in, I suppose, is autumn. Um, <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure why. I think it's because it's not too cold and it's not too hot. It's quite a nice weather, if you will, depending on how England goes, but it's quite a nice weather. Um, so yeah, I don't really cope overly well throughout the year. I think asthma sucks. <laughs> asthma isn't just something that's mild. Asthma isn't just something that everyone has and, and it would be ridiculous if you think it's severe. Some people like myself do have severe asthma. Um, it does seriously affect my living, even if I'm cooking sometimes. If the kitchen gets too steamy or too hot, I can't breathe. I can't be around people that spray deodorants, like spray on deodorants. I have to use roll-on now because of my asthma. Um, perfume, I have to hold my breath, spray it and run outside. And if I don't do that, then the chances are my asthma will be quite bad after I've sprayed it and breathed it in. Um, there's just so many factors to it and it sucks it really does like as I said in my previous video I physically was not able to get my tonsils removed because of my asthma because I'm such a high risk patient I can't get my tonsils removed or I couldn't when I was younger um, I missed a lot of school because of my asthma uh, in fact at one point I was home tutored because my asthma was so severe that going to school and being with loads of different people that smelt differently and all the different things in a classroom would start my asthma off. I couldn't do PE. I'd done trampolining for a short time but even then I had to stop and do my inhaler about four or five times during one, one hour. Um, 
there was just so many factors to it and I couldn't I couldn't be a proper child if you will I couldn't go on my bike I couldn't rollerblade I couldn't run I couldn't jump I couldn't do all of the things a child does I couldn't ride horses I couldn't have a dog I couldn't I couldn't do anything I was stuck in this horrible bubble that I had to deal with as a child and no one really understood it which I think was the hardest thing as a child so no one everyone was like oh it's just asthma it, it's, it's nothing it's just a bit of asthma I've got asthma too and I knew people with asthma that use their inhaler once a year or once every six months and I was like that is an asthma <clears throat> You've got an inhaler because sometimes you struggle to breathe. I have an inhaler because my life depends on it. If I don't use this, I will die. Um, I have also been referred for a second time now to St Mary's Hospital in London because my local hospital don't know what else to do with me. <clears throat> They've literally said, there is nothing more we can do for you because your asthma is not manageable, which is really scary because a professional a, a professional doctor, asthma, uh, uh, a professional doctor or asthma nurse or someone like that should know. Oh, sorry, should know what to do with my asthma. How do you not know that? Uh, that's scary. I d I can't manage it. I'm trying my best, but it's clearly not working very well. Um. So yeah, asthma isn't great, and not every asthma is. is as mild as the other. Uh, asthma's hard. Asthma rules my life. I am all for the people that say I have this but I am not this and yes I am Lindsay and yes I do have asthma but in so many respects asthma rules my life. There is so much I can't do because of my asthma and I was told to take up swimming because it helps open your lungs up. Well, it doesn't. The only thing that really helped me was singing. Um, but even then, if, if I've had an asthma attack sort of a few minutes before or an hour before, I'm still affected with the coughing and the struggling to find breaths. So, basically, <laughs> I can't do a whole lot to make it better. I'm just hoping that in the next coming months, so that they'll be able to figure something out. I know there is a injection called Zolaire, um, and it can put asthma and allergies at bay as best as. Um, but the criteria is very, 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 um, what's the word? The criteria is very strict. I mean, you have to have a certain amount of hospital stays and hospital visits and ambulances and whatever else but I, my asthma nurse has said that they're hoping that I will be an exception due to how rubbish my asthma is but also having my children so who knows I know there are some people with asthma that really do struggle and trust me I understand it one million percent and if you've got parents that go on at you to do your inhalers and you get sick of hearing it I know that feeling but please do them for your own health because I don't know if it would have changed, but if I'd done it as often as I should have done as a child, maybe I wouldn't be this bad now. I don't know. I don't understand all that side of it. All I know is asthma's really shitty sometimes. Um, and it's really hard to get a hold of and, and breathe. <laughs> Breathing is hard when you've got asthma. <clears throat> um, and so many things can trigger it off and whatever else. But if you do have asthma and you do want to talk about asthma or talk to someone who's had it most of their life, then you can click on the YouTube message and send me a message. I will keep an eye out if you do have asthma and want to talk about it. I think that's all there is to say. I'll update you as and when I know. But yes, asthma is not fun and it's not always mild. So whatever you do, don't make fun of someone with breathing difficulties. Um, it's hard enough that we can't breathe as is, let alone when someone's taking the mick out of us. And also, if you find yourself struggling to breathe, get to the doctors or get to the hospital. Don't wait around. Don't 
I know, I know it's so rich coming from me. Sit down. I know that's so rich coming from me who don't who doesn't do it, but <clears throat> that's my own stupid fault. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I am very sorry for the lighting. I'm very sorry for the lighting in this video. I don't actually have any lights at the moment apart from natural light and it is already it is already 20 to 8 in the evening so there you go get down um if you want to see more videos of mine and you want them to show up in your subscription box please hit that subscribe button down there i will very much appreciate it and i will see you next time bye, bye.